Hi, and welcome to the End of Life Journey and Beyond, The Sands of Time. My name is Lisa Strauss Lawrence, and I'm a bereavement specialist. Hello, Susan. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. So glad to see you. I feel like we've skipped a few Mondays with traveling and different things, but I'm really happy to be here today. I'm Susan Caperso, End of Life Doula, and I specialize in creative legacy work. So it's so nice to be here and it's just before Thanksgiving and we wanted to talk a little bit about being grateful and thankful, you know, even when we're not. Right? Yeah. To put yes. it bluntly because that's yes. how so many of us feel. Absolutely. And you know, you're watching this video today um, because the title caught your eye. And we, it's hard to be grateful and it's hard to be thankful at all times. And, you know, I've noticed, you've noticed, Lisa, and it's a common factor that families, um, families can be divided, especially after loss, right? Yes. And especially resulting from the last couple of years with everything that we've gone through with, yes. with COVID and all the losses that we've had. So your holidays may look a little bit different than they've looked in the past. You would agree with that, right? Absolutely. So being grateful and thankful is, is not as easy as we'd like it to be. Um, face it, we, we don't live in a Hallmark movie here. That's right. Well, we'd like to, right? That's Grief right. Is certainly messy, no matter which angle you're coming from. And sometimes so social media doesn't help either. And I have always found that to be a factor, social media, because we put it on and we see the happy faces of other people getting together and the groups and the gatherings. And it can make you feel sad sometimes. I mean, I, I don't know if you felt that way, so I'm talking from my heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. And our situations aren't always ideal as other families at, at this particular time. So dealing with both old losses and new losses, yeah. all who are new during this time doesn't matter. They're, it's loss it's and right. it's a really hard time to get through. And you know, we have to try and remember, and I'm a culprit of this too, but we have to remember that our friends and extended family members, they're going through their own stuff. They are, and it, they're not always as supportive as we need them to be, or that we'd like them to be, or that we hope for them to be, right? That support's not always there. But and part of that, let me just say that part of yeah. that is that we also bear some responsibility of saying what we need. And we're not I always agree. good at that either, okay? I definitely agree. It's, it's hard for most people to ask and to put their raw feelings out on the table and, and to ask for help. Um, especially during this time that can, it can be so lonely. So our lives are scattered. Our lives are far from perfect, right? And you need to know that we're talking, we're talking about little ways to be grateful and thankful. But I also, I believe, Lisa, that holidays are not mandatory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I yeah. like that word. And I, I heard it recently somewhere. But they, it's true, they're, they're not mandatory. Um, you can skip a holiday if you need sure. to. Sure. If you need to do what's right for you, you can. Sure. And if, but if you get out of the holiday, the comfort, right? The comfort and the closeness that you need, then don't skip the holiday, okay. you know? Then be a, participate in the holiday, but it has to be meaningful to you. It has to be a meaningful time. So. Allow yourself to be flexible with making that decision um, before you entertain it. I mean, even if you change your mind at, at the last minute, you know, be flexible in the idea that it's okay if I change my mind. And people will understand, even if you don't go, yeah. you know, even if you don't go. But it's human nature for all of us to feel thankful and grateful about little things along the way, even during sad times. And I think yes. even during the sad times that this is some of the most important times Absolutely, that we really need to dig down deep and find those grateful and thankful moments. So Lisa, I know that um, 
you know, your life's been filled with thankful and grateful moments along the way. And um, I'd like to hear a little about what do you think, you know, about, about feeling these emotions when we really don't want to. Well, I'll, t I'll just, it's very current because we just passed the birth date and I always say birth date, it's supposed to say birthday, birth date of my husband. So he would have been 69 on November 18th and um, birth dates are the celebration of that person because they were born that day. But it's sad that they're not alive anymore to celebrate their birthdays, their birth date. Um, and so I focus on that. And it was sad. And it is sad that he's not here to see and to experience and to live the life that I'm living and see his grandchildren. And I could name a million things that he is not here for. Um, and it is sad. And I let myself feel that way. I do. Because you can't just say, well, no you don't feel that way. But the gratefulness is in all the things that we did for his birthdays. You know, I was thinking about uh, when he was 50 and how we went to Thanksgiving in the city. We did a Thanksgiving weekend and it was very cool because we, I arranged at the Mayflower Hotel to have a suite at the corner room so we could see the whole parade right from the room. Oh, wow. um, and I booked that, I don't know, a year at least in advance. And I was grateful that we had done that and that it was something that I had pushed for, uh, that it was a surprise and all that. Um, and I thought about all the other celebrations that we had done for his birth dates and grateful that he had been part of those things. And he wasn't, by the way, a big birthday person. I am. So he did a lot of things for me because he knew that I liked them. Um, and, and so I celebrate his birth date uh, with a movie that we shared, The Big Chill. It's a great movie. It's about college and about the meaning of life and these friends who come together again. Um, and, and so, yeah, there are times where there's this overall sadness that comes in and, uh, and it's hard. It's hard to go to the next, you know, phase of that, the next feeling. Um, but when you do allow yourself to let some of that in, what happens is it turns how you, it's attitude and it turns how you view things. It's almost like, okay, I'm going to get up in the morning and this is a new day. Okay. I'm going to get up in the morning and oh my God, it's another day, same thing. I, you know, you start with that and whatever it is you allow yourself to feel is how it comes out. So gratefulness, if you allow yourself that beauty of focusing on something, whatever that is, um, it, it changes. It's, it's not going to replace. It's not going to replace, you know, that you miss him. It's not going to replace he isn't with you. It's not going to replace all he missed. But what it does is it gives you a perspective of something else. It adds a beauty of his existence into your life. And that's how, that's how I do gratefulness. Yeah, that was beautiful. You know, beautifully said. And we talk about that, about how your diagram, you know, um, explain, set, tell sure. us about the diagram again. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just mentioned to somebody the other day too, because she was talking about loss and grieving. So we're all taught, that grieving in your life, so you have your jar of life, and grieving as you get longer and longer, you know, from it, you know, a year, two years, five years, 10 years and all. So your grief gets small and small. If you were to look at your ball of grief, and so in your jar of life, it just gets smaller, smaller, and smaller. And so everybody says, oh, well, how long has it been? And then you say 12 years. Oh, you know, so, so it's not so bad, right? <laughs> or oh, it's only six months. Oh, I'm so sorry. It must be so difficult. So every measurement or how we think about it, talk about it. Oh, by 10 years. Oh, you, well, you should be over it already. Or you should be fine or whatever it is that society sort of says. That's not how it is. I'll tell you how it really is. Your jar of life and your grief. Okay. So you take this grief ball. It stays the same 
That grief is always there. It will never disappear. And we all know nothing will ever be the same. We know that, all right? In our heart of hearts, that's just the way it is, folks, okay? But your jar of life gets bigger and bigger because you allow life to happen. You allow yourself to move on. You allow more things to encompass in your life that make you happy. And grief is there. It's always by your side, but it's not taking up all your life. Okay. And it's not getting smaller, but your life and what you move to gets bigger. And I love that because that really shows how you live your life and how we know that the people who loved us would want us to be happy. We all know that. As much as we miss them, as much as it hurts us, we all know how important it is that we live our life to the fullest. You know how important it is that life is precious, so precious to all of us, that it has meaning, that it has beauty to it. Um, and we are, we are depriving ourselves every day if we don't allow ourselves to move on in whatever way we can. There's no magic formula. Well, after this, you have to do this, after this. That's not the way it works. But we, as people who have lost our loved ones, need to figure it out for ourselves. Uh, you know, as a bereavement specialist, right? Um, what are, what would you suggest to somebody watching this video? Say it's Thanksgiving morning or Christmas morning and you're waking up and you're dreading the day, okay? Sure. Sure. How can you be, how do you begin? How do you get through that day uh, with a little bit more ease and comfort? Sure. The first thing I want to say is that usually getting up to that day is more difficult. I think that it's the anticipation of that day of what that event is than the day itself. Okay. So uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is I like people to remember the wonderful things the Thanksgiving things that happened, the watching the parade, the things that they identify with, the things that they always thought, oh, wow, this is wonderful, you know, and being grateful then to have those things still in your life. There's still the Thanksgiving Day Parade. There's still great food. And maybe you love to cook. And so I'm thankful for each year, there's a pumpkin pie or there's a pumpkin bread or whatever it is that the small things that you, that you love. And those things are still there. They feel different, okay? And they're gonna feel different. And time's gonna go on um, and life will work out. But yeah, there is a way of focusing on those wonderful, grateful things. There. You know, you and I are about celebration, right? Yes, we are. So even if it's um, this person in your life, maybe their favorite was pumpkin pie, Maybe get up a little earlier that day and light a candle on the counter and say a little prayer if that's something that brings you comfort and make that pumpkin pie maybe a little bit more with a little bit more mindfulness now, right? In the ingredients and make a special pumpkin pie just for yeah. them, yes. right? So it's, yeah. it's the, those simple little things that right. might not mean anything to somebody else, but but you can be thankful, first of all, that you can still make the pumpkin pie. That's right. And have that That's capacity. Right. And right. thankful that you are still here and that you woke up and can take another breath this morning. And maybe you can celebrate their memory and share that with your family and friends um, with that little tiny light the candle and celebrate them through that pumpkin pie. Yeah, and I want to talk about the family and stuff. You know, we deprive ourselves from enjoying the people who are here if we just focus on the people who aren't. And I'm not saying that you have to just forget the loved one, but it's not fair to the people who are still around and loving you and wanting to be with you that they not get a good part of you. Anna and uh a, a positive part of you, you know, they understand, they understand it's not the same. They understand you feel sad. They understand you may be angry, they even, you know, but, but beyond that, it, you're grateful that they're there. They are still there with you. It is true. And, and not everybody really understands and, and 
Trip. really understands what Trip. you're going through. Trip. So Trip. their way of telling you how you should feel or what you should do or where you should go or no, you can't be alone yeah. or no, you can't, you know, giving us all this ad advice, given their, and it's their best advice. Because it is their best advice. Know, they don't know what's right for you. Maybe they've suffered a loss and it was right for them. It doesn't mean that it's right for you. Trip. So instead of being agitated, because that can be irritating, right? Just, you know, accept it with understanding and say that's so it's okay it's okay but that's just not right for me and i'm i'm so thankful and grateful that you're in my life and yes. you can offer this support and yes you know but i think today maybe i might do this or yes. i think i can come and maybe stay for a half hour and right. that's not for me right 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 we have to verbalize our needs and i'm glad you said yeah. that because it's hard. It's very hard. You know, we try to answer to everybody and we try to help everybody and we try to, you know, please everybody and all, but it's very important that we be true to ourselves as well. Um, so verbalizing that is so important, Susan, very important. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and again, it, it depends on, you know, what, what stage you're in, right? It was your loss 10 years ago and it might feel like two, two years ago um was your loss this past year it doesn't it doesn't really matter what the timing is yeah. but it's it's what you're feeling that's in right the moment that's for right. that day you may have good intentions you may plan on you know being grateful and thankful that you still can walk and take two steps in front of you and breathe the air that our planet gives us and and you're going to that occasion and that gathering today no matter what and you may wake up and not feel like it. That's and right. Say, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and know that that's okay. You have to yeah. do what's right for you. Yes, you do. Yes, you right. do. And the others, and you have to explain to the others as best you can. Um, right. Because they, you're right. They don't understand. And they certainly don't know what it's like to walk in our shoes. And even we don't know each other. Because we could be in a room full of widow widowers. And every single person. People are angry people, guilty people are sad people, are, you know, all kinds of things that we all feel differently. But the gratefulness allows us to change the way and our attitude about many things in our lives. If we allow it to come in, you have to be open to it. You do. You have to be, have an open mind and an open heart. And part of being grateful and being thankful, I think, is really to 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 celebrate and be thankful for that time that you had together with them. that's right that's right you know and that you had all those years together i mean things happen in an instant we could walk out on the curb tomorrow and our story will be cut short that's right maybe you know it could have been the reverse maybe you wouldn't be here and they would be you know grieving for you and it's not easy for us to say but yeah. lisa and i have been through this so in no way shape or form are we making light of anything no we're not but we're the last people to make light of anything actually exactly. because we, we know what it's like we know how it feels um but we're also trying to move people and help them to move along in the best way they can and and by helping them see these feelings and and bring them in allow them to come in you're allowing yourself to have some joy some happiness some despite or in spite of the circumstances and the situations yeah and it's tough it's it is really tough. really really tough it is tough I, there's many times i've sat at the thanksgiving day table and i've said you know my husband and i always bake the pumpkin pies bake the pumpkin breads Bake the pecan pies. That's what we brought every time. And this is different. This is very different. Um, and I know that, but I'm grateful that we did that all those years. I'm grateful that we, you know, had, you know, our cousins and our family who are now all over the United States. And we don't, we don't even have that anymore. Nobody has that anymore. You know, you know my husband didn't like to go anywhere on Thanksgiving because he was a big, big guy, and the leftovers we'd have for the week, right? We made sure and we made a lot of food. One year we went to his sister's, 
and he complained the whole way home. He's like, you bought what, a plate of leftovers? What is that? You couldn't bring a pan of leftovers home? And <laughs> yeah, so now I gave the kids, uh, my boys, an option this year. And I says, well, let's do something. You know, some people go to a restaurant. Oh, yeah. And, that and they like that. That's special right? to them. Yeah. But guess yeah. what the boy said? Then how will we have the leftovers in the house? No, we're going to have Thanksgiving dinner. And that's nice. big for them. So nice. that's what we're, gonna, we're going to do. Nice. Yeah. And I hope you're going to make some of your husband's favorites. Okay. All the yeah. things that he enjoyed eating and the things that you can remember about him because that's special. Yeah. That's special. Special. And, then, and then make you new. And then obviously you make you new memories and the things that are important to you as well. Yeah. Exactly. So I, you know, I hope this helped a little bit today. Um, you know, we don't want to we didn't want to make the topic sound be grateful, be happy. Be <laughs> We're not sugarcoating anything, okay? We're not. We know it's not that way. No, but, you know, you can be grateful and thankful, even if, if it's little things like waking up and making yourself that delicious cup of coffee in the morning and being grateful that you can drink it That's and right. celebrate them. And you had the time that you did with the people that you love. Right. And again, we're not saying this is easy. OK, not at all. We are not sugarcoating anything. We're not saying that that this is an easy process, but it is really important process of your life. It will help you cope. It will help your attitude. It will help the way you see things in life. You know, it's that glass half full, half empty or the glass period, you know, I have a whole glass. It's not half and half. I have a whole glass. You exactly, know? Lisa. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. so we hope this helped today, right? Yep, absolutely. A little bit. A little bit. Just be thankful for for the support and the love and the friendships and the family that you do have in your life right now and appreciate that. You know what? For me personally, I will wow. tell all of you that the most important thing for me is that I'm grateful that I'm alive. And I am. There are a lot of people who aren't anymore. And they died young. And I'm grateful that I'm alive. And I'm grateful to have this life. Very grateful. Yeah. And I'm grateful for the same, Lisa, because with, you know, in our chosen careers, you and I, we see a lot of loss and we see a lot of people losing people they love. And, and plus along with our own loss, you know, it's, it's a lot, but we, we've come to the place where we know that this is a part of life. And this is just a journey for all of us. So while we're here, appreciate, be grateful, and be thankful for what yes. we do. Yes, absolutely. And in our spare time, you and I are busy doing fun things. We want yes. to tell everybody some of the things that you were doing. Uh, coming full circle and remember me, the story of my life, a couple books on Amazon that you can um, find there. Uh, East End Dot Academy houses a couple online courses that uh, we put together. Lisa and I built a course on there as well. Uh, a lot of end of life courses that might be helpful for you. And um, we both do consulting. You know, I do end of life doula work and, and um, the story of me. It's a story that I help both end of life clients and healthy and vibrant people to leave their memories and stories and experiences down on paper with photos for future generations, especially the ones you'll never get a chance to meet. And you so do I not have to be dying to take advantage of any of that. I mean, that's so right. important. That's right, that's right. Fulfilling so many lives, you know, getting your stories down, you're leaving roots, um, you're validating those future generations, their existence in the world, and only you can do it. Right? We're the yes. ancestor today, all of us, and only we can do that. Yes. So let's hear a little Wonderful. bit about what, what you do, Lisa. There are two books, Pancreatic Cancer, It's a Family Affair, Pancreatic Cancer, Families Move On. Uh, as you have heard before, my husband died 12 years ago, pancreatic cancer. It is a horrible disease. And cancer is horrible, but this is one of the four worst Um untreatable and all of that. And the, and the survivor rate is very small. But anyway, I wrote both books as a support for people going through it. Some people have used it actually as gifts 
for people uh, from moving on in their lives. Both books are on Amazon, but my the last one is on uh, www.familiesmoveon.com. And all the money goes to the Lescarton Foundation for Pancreatic Cancer Research. And finally, future a cure, which I hope in someday I will see that to happen. Um, and also I do bereavement work. I do it with groups or individuals. Um, and my goal is to help people move on in their lives and to celebrate their lives in the best way they can, because that's what our loved ones would want. So that's what we do. And we wish everyone a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. And I'm great. I am grateful to you, Susan. We've Thank been you. doing this almost a year. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, and one it's, year anniversary. That's right. And it's wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, Thank you, Lisa. I'm grateful for you too. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. Yep. Take care. Bye.